In today's video, I want to talk to you about how to use external power with the Canon EOS R6. And this also works for the R5, the R5C, and most likely will work for the R7 as well. I also want to talk about the power source that I'm using, why I'm using it, and why it may be beneficial to you if you're a filmmaker trying to use the Canon R6. I didn't originally purchase the R6 planning to put it in some kind of filmmaker's configuration. I originally planned on using it as a secondary camera to my Red Komodo, but also using it for a lot of my YouTube work and a lot of web-based client work that I have down here in South Florida. Something happened over the past few weeks where I had to send my Komodo off to get serviced at RED, and even now it is still being serviced by RED. My options are to either go rent a RED because RED actually isn't offering free rentals anymore while your camera's being serviced, or spend the same amount of money and upgrade my R6 a little bit to get it into a cinema configuration. And we'll talk about the whole cinema configuration probably in next week's video because I'm waiting on one piece before it finally gets completed. Specifically in today's video, we're gonna talk about externally powering the R6, how it works, and how I built my setup to be able to use this V-mount battery from ZG Cine that I'm using to power everything that you see in today's kit. So first things first, I want to explain how external powering works with the EOS R6 and a lot of the other EOS cameras. So if your RF mount camera supports power delivery over USB-C, what you need is some kind of device that will output more than 30 watts of power delivery. What I'm using here is a V-mount battery from ZG Cine. I use this V-mount battery to power my Red Komodo with my V-mount adapter. I also used it via its power delivery out to actually fully power my Blackmagic Pocket 4K and 6K. So this battery does a lot. The battery also has multiple power outs. If you use the V-mount itself, that's a power out. It has a five watt out out of its USB outlet that's separate from the power delivery. It also has a D-tap out. So not only can I power my R6, but I can also power my monitor or maybe another accessory I wanna use as well, like a follow focus. The RF cameras that support power delivery have a USB-C on the side. Like I said, you need some kind of device that will be 30 watts or more power delivery in order to power your camera. And when you plug it in, you're actually not going to see an overt sign that the camera is being charged. What happens is if the camera is drawing power from whatever power bank, power delivery system you're using, the battery icon will actually go from white to gray. No matter if you have full power in your battery or if you have half a battery, the icon will go from white to gray. Now, Canon actually recommends that you use a fully charged internal battery with the power delivery. Number one, because you actually have to have a battery in the camera still to just power the camera on, no matter what. The other thing too is the camera will alternate between power delivery power and the internal battery power. So you can expect that by the end of the day, whatever battery you have in your camera may be depleted. Now to build my rig, I'm using a V-mount. So it isn't necessarily the smallest power source. So what I ended up doing was I ended up getting a cage, which not only served the function to mount my V-mount battery, but it also gave me some NATO rails so I can mount my external monitor, which again, I'll talk more in a further video because for this video's purposes, I'm just using a plain external monitor that does work with the R6 but I actually plan on using a Ninja 5 so I can actually externally record to that as well and get higher bitrate recordings from the R6 and have them in ProRes. So the next thing I got was the 15 millimeter rod adapter that goes on the bottom of the cage. And then of course, 15 millimeter rods. I went for 12 inch 15 millimeter rods. Then I actually opted for a non-powered plate because it's much lighter, much smaller to have if you're not gonna use the V-mount power. Now the pros and the cons of using a power plate are power plates tend to be much bigger than the plate you see here in this video. They actually use the V-mount pins on the bottom of the battery, so they extend the amount of power out you can get from your V-mount battery. For the R6, I don't need more than what the ZG Cine offers, but not all V-mount batteries have three power out in addition to their normal V-mount capacity. So some people may need a power plate. However, I chose this battery for the reason of not normally needing a power plate, even when I'm using the Red Komodo. The only camera I ever really needed a power plate for was when I was using the pocket cameras. 
So once you have this little cheese plate on the back of the camera, the next is the V-mount. Again, I use the ZG Cine. You're free to use whatever you want. However, there aren't a lot of V-mount batteries that actually offer power delivery out. Most of them offer five volt USB out and then also D-tap out. But the option to have power delivery is just amazing. And then on top of that, these batteries obviously charge over power delivery too. So you don't need V-mount chargers if you're on the go. You can just use your laptop charger or your phone charger. As long as you have something that outputs power delivery over USB-C, you can charge the camera, you can charge the V-mount battery. It just really simplifies the whole process. Now at this point, you may be asking, well, why are you building this whole rig around a V-mount battery? Well, the reason being, is by having one battery, one battery type, you actually reduce the amount of chargers and the amount of bulk overall you need to bring on set with you or just when you're traveling. So that's one of the things that I started doing with my Komodo and my pocket cameras as I was just using V-mount batteries to charge everything, including the accessories. So I only had to bring V-mount chargers and I didn't have to bring a bunch of little MPF chargers or Canon chargers or this charger or that charger. I just brought two V-mount chargers with me. So the same concept goes for this. I can use the one V-mount battery and this battery doesn't even need a V-mount charger. I can charge over USB-C, but I can not only power my Canon R6, but I can power what is here, this free world monitor, but in the future will be my Atomos Ninja 5. And then I can also power a follow focus or a wireless transmitter, whatever I need to power, all using one battery. And again, not having to charge a bunch of different batteries, devices, whatnot. So this for me is the simplest way to get the R6 going in a cinema configuration with a battery. As I said before, I'm gonna go over the full cinema configuration in most likely next week's video. I'll put a link to it in the description below when that comes out. So if you have any questions over anything I went over in today's video, please make sure to ask in the comments below. And if you got knowledge out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Until next time, thank you for watching everybody. My name is Jeff Fagan and I will We'll see you in the next video.